Debbie, you, yeah, you stay. Try to stay separate. There you go. Okay, um, let's do quick and very quick introductions, then we'll come back to David's question again or, or his thoughts. Um, Victoria, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Victoria. I'm a secondary coordinator um, in Vista Unified, um, and just really interested in, um, you know. Kayla sent you. Thank you. Thank you. For yes, that. Benna sent me, um, and we're just we're really interested in finding ways to use um, AI appropriately. So that's why I'm here. Cool, cool. Um, we'll we'll circle back and hear how you're using it now, Debbie. I am. Um, can you hear me? My microphone. Yes. Okay. It's perfect. Yep. I so, am a school librarian who actually now is no longer in a school. Um, I run a company with my son called Noodle Tools, which is a research platform. And I have been asked by um, a, a worldwide global publisher to write a, to gather essays for a book on AI in education. And I'm struggling to keep them evergreen because what people hand me is what I did yesterday or what I'm going to do tomorrow and what has to happen is we have to think about what's important about that why is that valuable what does it teach you how does it teach you to go forward um so that's one of my challenges the other is of course that um we're in the middle of playing around with a GPT to see if it can augment noodle tools. Um, and so th this experiment that you are running here is really quite amazing, Paul, uh, and very interesting. Um, and I've so played around just, with chat. Just to say, I, I just had a conversation with somebody else a couple of days ago, and she set it up by saying, hey, look, I want to make sure you know that we're we're going to market with something very soon, like you're doing. So yeah, I don't know how all that works out, but I, yeah. I I'm all about you know sharing stuff. So great. Um, bye, David. <laughs> I think anyway, I think yeah. what's uh, people are being uh, rushed to publish, and if mm -hmm. they're not careful, it, by the time it actually gets published, they'll be out of date. Because just as you mm -hmm. talked about how chat is continually revising from 3.4 to 4 um, to mm -hmm. whatever else is coming down the road, <laughs> it can't be about the tool. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Um, um, I'll reintroduce myself because I didn't get a chance to. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Yeah. So uh, my name is Nick Kuyos, and I live and work uh, just outside New York City. And so Paul and I have been working on how to operationalize the use of AI. And I agree with Debbie very much so that it's the AI is a tool that has to be used to facilitate doing other things that are pedagogically ped ped correct and vetted. And so we have, I've developed a six part instructional model with a very specific writing tool what the ai can do is have students become the stewards of that process rather than have a teacher act as the one who institutes all the corrections and feedback and so paul's tool that the now comment allows us to create very specific thinking partners that can help students with their writing in a controlled format it's and so we're very excited about the possibilities and how it's starting to unfold. And you keep coming back, even though you see what a mess I am. No, <laughs> I'm messing a good way. Yeah, no, I couldn't. But, yeah. uh, Victoria, do you want to say a little bit about what you've been doing at Vista um, around AI at this point, or what you teach and so forth? Yeah. So um, we haven't really been doing a lot. I mean, I, I think there's some teachers who are doing some innovative things. I'm um, part of the, the district office um, staff. And so we're really from our end, you know, trying to help. That's a different, that's a, a, a important perspective. So keep, yeah. yeah. 
um, we're trying to to help teachers see it as a tool to be harnessed and used um, and not to be feared necessarily. Um, and so that's kind of the, the perspective, um, you know, that, that I'm coming from. Of, of course, we need, you know, academic honesty and, and all of that. But how, how can we use um, chat GPT, especially to, to help students um, with writing? And so I have all sorts of ideas, you know, about what teachers can, you know, what, what they can do with it um, to help with the writing process and the, the brainstorming process and, and all of that. Um, and so oh, I'm just here to, to get more information. Cool, cool. De Debbie and, and, um, and Victoria, just to know, David has been here an hour already, so his name, but and has to go. But David, do you want to say anything as you, as you jump? No, I just want to thank you guys for the conversation. I'm sorry I can't stick around for this one. It sounds like it'll be very interesting, but I look forward to following the discussion um, next week and in any other way. So thanks very much for putting this together, Paul, and um, have a great conversation. Thanks. Okay, so um, on the table, I can, can I can I just go? Uh, get, uh, yeah. So <laughs> you've been online for an hour. You don't have to come no, no, excuse okay. yourself. So on the table, on the table, if you can see it, and, and I'll briefly explain it, we've been developing GPT thinking partners since March, right? And and the we is certainly people who come here on Wednesday nights to kind of mess around and think about largely national writing project teachers. Um and so the so there are there are thinking partner PT thinking partners that help students with their writing right the the example that Jill gave earlier um, and I'll say this with her eighth graders was that they were writing a hundred word narrative and we went through we had GPT partner read so every time the kid accesses this um, GPT it reads through the 13 um, essays that won last year's New York Times contest, right? And comes up with three criteria and then looks, then we tell it to look at just two sentences and help me with uh, working on those two sentences. So very specific prompts that we give it to help the student with their writing, right? And Nick and I, Nick has, as he referred to a whole protocol, and we've started to think about, for example, you know, look at the beginning sentence of every, the beginning of every sentence and give me feedback on that. But we've put into the prompt very specific things that Nick has developed around that. Do you want to briefly say more about that, Nick? Or? Yeah, yeah. So um, during my time, to give some kind of background and scope, because tonight they're actually doing the presentation for the Board of Education for AP results. and. Last year, I had 71% of the student population take the AP literature exam in my course, which is not common, even for our own school district. Generally, the class sizes are 10 to 15 students. I had 67 students take AP Lit. It's a relatively small school district. And despite that, we still had 87% three or Three or higher and really remarkable results and the only way we can achieve that is by i have this very specific writing protocol that suggests there's really only five stylistic elements and four content mechanisms that a good writer has to understand and so i've been doing this for years with students with tremendous success and so when i met paul the, the melding together of my ideology and paul's tool was um it's really organic. And so now what you can do is you can allow, again, chat GPT, like anything like the internet, if you feed it good information, it can do really powerful things. And so Paul and I have been working to really narrow down the use of these tools that I have. And what it produces is remarkable where students now can write more often and get feedback. It, they're not, it doesn't, it's not producing essays for them it's used as a tool for them to become better writers and understand how to be a better writer, what, what great writers do. And so we're gonna to start to try to develop this with schools where you could institute this process and have it be safe because it's 
a closed site and it won't be shared you know uh, broadly into the general public and then teachers can also start to refine their feedback and the way that they interact with students so it's really a remarkable tool when you see it in action and and so that's where we're, we're, we're working on right now kind of in the infancy we still just we just started doing this about a month or so ago i would say paul right yeah yeah um any questions for nick on that Any thoughts yeah. I have a question, yeah. Nick. Um, when you say a protocol and then you divided them up into two areas, could you repeat that again and explain what you mean by the difference between those two things? You said you have five to buy his book. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just joking. No. So, do you have a book for me to buy? Uh, I do. It's in it's in <laughs> editing phase right now. And oh, okay. And but, sorry, also answer her question. It was just a joke. <laughs> Right. And there's also a student manual that's kind of a simplified version of, of the document that students can use and access. But the whole premise is that mistakenly, a lot of teachers give generic feedback to students about their writing. They say things like, you need to be more descriptive or need more details. And we even use terms that are confusing, like topic sentence. You know, topic sentence for students is a confusing term because they don't really know what you mean. You mean the topic of the essay? And the topic of the paragraph, and they often drift back to places where they don't belong. And so over the years of trying to help students that were really heterogeneously grouped in an AP setting, I had to develop very specific protocols. And I did this by reading the exemplars that the college board offered. So I've read every one that they've ever put out there and developed a very specific process where you're either writing you have content that you're thinking about, which is the stuff that you're going to, your, your explanation, your critical stance, or you're trying to write well. And so by separating out those two things and having students focus on, focus on them individually, and I've done this in my district, I was the department chair there. So from six to 12, all teachers use the same terminology. They use exactly the same process. I develop single point rubrics that um, make it very easy to evaluate for the students, self-evaluate, peer evaluate, and teachers evaluate. And so this whole process has allowed us tremendous success. And so we're just really to start to sh share that. So really when you're writing see the content or stylistic elements, that's really. I best. see. I, um, I, I know you are right about the part of really narrowing down using very clear criteria i know that that works better okay. what bothers me is that if you say to chat no this is wrong this doesn't make sense chat four at least says back to you oh you're right no matter whether you're right or not and i wonder how you um how much you can control that even within a very narrow environment so, so the thing, I... yeah i'm gonna pass this off to paul but what paul ha has control over is now comment and it's different than just using chat gpt it's a very specific um process maybe while paul's explaining it that would probably be so... some clarity yeah yeah, I hope Sam gets here, uh, but but just so, so I'm looking for him. So, so here, and and this this confusion will keep coming up because it doesn't seem to be. So, a GPT is so you have ChatGPT has pre-trained models, like it, it trained models in lots of different ways, and then and then it creates engines and models, and then that model goes to this program chatbot right that is is programmed in in my view so my experience of it to be very pleasing like you said to to not disagree much right and and to be kind of robotic hi sam <laughs> hi sam you, you'll work it out um so what happens with with our gpts and i think with any gpt certainly with ours is that before it gets to that pre-programmed chatbot, we create our own chatbot. So our it's it doesn't go through ChatGPT at all, right? It does use all the models and all the pre-training it got 
you know, to a certain point, it got to when it get to 4.0, but you can, because we control the chat bot, you can make it very stay with a Hamas position, which we've de developed, right? Or stay with uh, a Zionist position. Um, before we like created those prompts, you know, it was creating a, a peace treaty <laughs> out of nowhere, right? So, right. yeah. This, so, so, so what you're saying is by limiting the playing field in which it operates, the, the GPT is only can't reach out to things that you don't want it to reach out to. You say limit your analysis or limit your response to just this package I give you. Yeah, but and and I just want to clarify again, it, and and in, it does that instead of whatever Chat GPT does, right? Right, but okay. you still you still don't get um, that. Um, uh, kind of, um, uh, you still don't get, for example, hallucinations and uh, oh, yeah, errors. Hallucinations and all that that comes from that. Yeah. Yes. But there are ways to work with that, right? Okay. Our, so, yeah. I mean, we have we have a research G GPT, for example, that, that uh, I mean, it's from a professor in Portland, but um, who who, and we've told it very specifically, do not give us citations, you know, don't cite anything that you can't give us, or don't quote anything that you can't give us a citation for, right? And, mm -hmm. and so we've, you know, we're trying to control it in that way. Doesn't always work, and we have to keep working at it, but yeah. Circling back, and, and Sam, can, can, if you, you might be wanting to just lurk, which is cool, but could you just say hello or... There you Hi. Go. Oh, oh, Sam, the other Sam. Okay, Sam, 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 Sam. You can you can unmute and join us. Introduce yourself. I thought you were Sam Reed. You oh. are you are Jill's student. And yeah. Integrated, who got here after basketball practice? I really appreciate your coming. <laughs> Sam, tell us uh -huh. about tell us about uh, what you've been working on. Yeah, so uh, me and my friend Nate, um, using Now Comment, we've just experimented with um, the different AIs and like duplicating them and creating our own. Like my teacher wanted like a book thought journal sparker, which should like help you extend your thoughts. So me and my friend Nate made it. And then um, using the personas, which it also allows, um, then we made it like find motivations for the passages and changed it to Kobe Bryant. And then again, like um, my friend Nate created like an email AI, which will like you put in a prompt, like, hey, email my teacher about my missing homework. And it'll um, really nicely send the email. Yeah. Cool, cool. Sam, you can, you don't have to, you don't have to mute. You can say, unless you have, uh, it's fine. We're a small group. We can keep talking. Um, I, I want to say this. So I started. So could we look at some of Sam's prompts? Would that be a useful thing to do? Yes, I'm getting a nod. Victoria, are you OK with that? <laughs> that sounds good. And I'm on mute because my dog is being a brat. So <laughs> oh, don't. we don't mind that. That's OK. OK. <laughs> Okay, Sam, I'm going to go, I'm going to share my screen and, and I wasn't sure you were coming, but that's cool, cool that you're here. Um, am I sharing these? Yes. So believe it or not, Sam, these are the thinking partners that your other students in your class have created. Here's one. Now you created a group called NAM Incorporated. <laughs> Which yeah, that's that's me and my friend Nate, and it's just like Nate and Sam combined. That's so cool. So, which one can I look at? Can we? Do you, which one? You told me. I think it was today. You told me one was ready to publish. Which one is that? Um, that's the um. Wait, I don't see it there. 
Wait. Uh, maybe it's up higher. Do you remember what it's called? Book Thought Helper. It, does it have Kobe's name on it? There's oh, no, it's called? up there. It's up there. Oh, I there see it. it. Book Thought Helper. So this one is, okay. You explained what uh, your teacher, Jill, uh, Ms. Stadronsky, um, and I'm oh. going to, so here it is, right? Do you see it? Yes. So she kind of okay. wanted us to like, we have something called book thought journals where we enter like a passage in the book we're reading. And then we think about like how this passage is really cool, relates to our life and has a deeper meaning. So um, my book thought helper um, is used to like ask questions about it. So it can help you like spark ideas for your um, book thought journal, which will make it easier for you. And what kind of results have you, so it's a pretty simple one, right? Yeah, um, it's just. It's not like, a critique, that's actually, yeah, go ahead. What were you gonna say? It's simple and it it's like gives you questions in like paragraph format, like multiple paragraphs though. And it'll have one paragraph of one question, another paragraph, one question, and then another paragraph, the third question, or like maybe four or five. And then in the end, it'll all have like a conclusion about like what most of these like questions will all like bring down to, or that's what we've been getting results of. Mm -hmm. So what's that process like? I'm I'm asking that this this way. So people kind of wonder: Could you make a perfect prompt, right? And I want to say that, yeah, make it as perfect as you can. But then it's really a test back and forth to see what you get. Has that been okay for you, or how do you feel about it? Uh, yeah. So we've just like, um, uh, we have like a. You know how we have the NOM incorporated group? Mm -hmm. So we have multiple, like, you, there's like the conversation feature and the um, now comment. So we've mm -hmm. started multiple, like, conversations and um, we joke about it. So there's one for NOM testing headquarters, one for NOM conversation headquarters. And um, this has all happened since Monday, by the way. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Keep yeah, going. so we all have it in like one. Um, so we have the testing headquarters where we just keep on putting in the AIs. And each time we put it in, if we like what we get, then we keep it the same. But we also find flaws and we try improving on that. Other th thoughts for Sam? And I'm gonna I'm gonna go try to find his that group. Is that sound that sounds reasonable? It's it's called the what? Dom Incorporated. I'm pretty sure I jumped on that. It might not be shared with you actually, so oh. There you go. Um, yeah, I'll try sharing it with you. You have, can you share? Yeah. Let me stop sharing. Whatever the, we lost Victoria, but that's fine. Um, oh, yeah, I invited you. Oh, you invited. Oh. That's weird. I'm sorry. Sorry about this. Uh, we'll get there. <laughs> um, take a minute. So, Deb, while they're doing that, Deb, there's a quick question for yeah, you. Yeah, please. Yeah. So, 
noodle tools does that have any connection with noodle bib that was around the previous <laughs> yeah we started out when i was a librarian at a at k-8 school in um down uh on the peninsula mm -hmm. and we put up five um kind of um, very simple forms that where you fill in the author the title whatever right. and um we put it up on the school server and it brought the entire server down because everybody wanted to use it. And that's when we had to get off the server and, and start paying for our own server. So originally it was just a tool to help me teach kids how to cite sources. And, no, and, and it's it grown. Now we yeah. Use, yeah, we used yeah. it for years. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, and we, cool, we, cool. we our whole goal was to give it away for free because we, we, it was just something we really thought everybody could use. Yeah. And even now, um, we price it so that any individual or any school could buy it. It's not a, you know, one of these pricey software programs. Right. right. But now we have note cards and outline and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, That's that fun that you used it, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we did it for years because it, you know that was a big part of the process. Now you find you can access some of that if just the documentation can be found in other ways as well. It's offered now on a lot, you know, and even if you just go to Google Scholar sometimes and click a tab, it will tell you APA, MLA, Chicago, yeah. the different styles. Yeah, it it only it only matters if you're going to use it as a with the teacher back end which yeah. is where the feedback and everything all right really Looks like victoria you're back or you were i'm here yeah i've been oh, here good, the whole good. time I thought, oh sorry I, thought, I just didn't see you so you know i what, see something weird on my screen is that you see the now I, comment you i don't, don't. See i see comment? i see kind of like a small yeah um mm, okay let not, me work on it. oh oh wait oh you see that you see sorry. the double room yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll work on this here. <laughs> That's okay. Did, you know, I, I did find it. No, uh, we're, we got it. <laughs> um, start. Okay. There's that. Now there's this. Ah, uh huh. Is better. Okay. No. Okay. So, no. Sam, you, what what happened? It's All we crazy. see, we see the room, and then we see like inlaid inside of that, like. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, I, I think <laughs> I know. I'm gonna try again. Sorry, second yes, window, window. Uh, why can't I do this? To me? Is that right? Screen. Entire screen. Start. So that's the mess, but now you should see this. Okay, so now what, yeah. Now, now you see now come. Okay, Sam, are you still there? Yep. Okay, so explain to me what you've got here, or should I go to join the discussions? Um. So we have like a lot of like um of these group discussion places, like trying to mim mimic like a like a work office, except on now comment. Mm -hmm. So we have um like multiple uh like the um group discussions. It's going we to have, the um... Okay. So any of these to look at? Yeah, I would scroll down a bit. Okay. And then you can see we have a lot of like um conversations. Mm -hmm. And some of them we just like put a um put like our ais and like <clears throat> put responses in mm -hmm. um yeah and we're just trying to like get used to like the uh format of now comment and testing out our ais with like multiple passages like the email ai right there uh-huh mm -hmm. uh i was pretty mad Sam, that what you're day. doing i wish everybody was doing but go ahead keep keep talking yeah yeah, so for that email AI, I was pretty mad that day. 
because um, the lady I was supposed to walk her dog forgot what time to schedule. So I asked email AI to write one for me. And to write yeah, an email to a lady who forgot what time I was supposed to walk the dog. Yeah. And and it, how did it work. do, do you think? Yeah. It's because, like, in in the moment, I think that, like, email AI is good. Because in the moment, you could be mad. But, like, you should always, like, have kind regards. And if you just, like, ask email AI, like, um, this lady forgot that I was supposed to walk her dog. And I'm, I was probably pretty mad in that moment. Or not really that mad, but just, like. In the heat of the moment, mm -hmm. you can get pretty mad. So email AI works because it always remembers to have like to be kind in its um, sentences, so you don't get caught up in like the heat of the moment during an uh, email. Nate was saying that there was too kind though, but sorry, I shouldn't have jumped in. Debbie, do you want to say? Yeah. No, no, no. I just I I think it's such a good idea, Sam, because it seems to me what you're saying is. It helped calm you down so that when you sent this email, did you adjust it at all or did you just send it the way it was? Well, I adjusted it a bit because, like, I was kind of mad at that moment. And you like, wanted to put a little bit more into it than uh, chat gave you. Yeah, I wanted to make it a bit more personal. But that's uh -huh. just, like, the like the basis of, like, what I what I, I said. I love that idea, Sam. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> awesome. We all could use that kind of a pause before we shoot off some mm -hmm. emails. So what's what's fast? There are a few things fascinating. Here. One is you were not assigned to do this. <laughs> you're just doing this on your own with with Nate. Uh, another is you're testing it, right? You're you're trying it out, trying different ideas. Like there's yeah. one, at, right? You want to stay after class. One that does what? Uh, the second one's the same exact input. Okay. The reason it's important to test it, by the way, is that you're not going to get the same thing every time. Have you noticed that? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like, because even like the formatting is different. Like on some of my different AIs, like sometimes it's just in one paragraph. Sometimes it's in just like, like eight paragraphs that are like two sentences long. Does it learn from your um, from what you say back, or or do you have a conversation with it and say, "I want you to adjust this a little differently," or do you not? Uh, no, it's just you. We get the like see the flaws in it, and then we take that information, and we since we're not like pros at AI yet, so we still have to like um kind of test still, even with just like the mechanics of how it works. Uh -huh. keep on inputting like like um paul taught us like today that we can't tell something to not do something <laughs> like that's something we were doing and um and i could be wrong about that by the way oh. that's just an opinion <laughs> but go ahead yeah well, we were um we would just test and test and test until because like i don't think with these like i i'm pretty sure that like you can't perfect AI, like everything. It's like you can keep on making improvements to our work. So we keep on to trying to, prompt. yeah, to mm -hmm. our prompt. And then we keep on trying to um, improve it with each like test run. And then, yeah, like I said, we just find the flaws and we try to like make it so that it's like not what we like how um, for the email AI. Um, Nate thought it was being too nice, so he tried telling it, like, to rem to remember not to be too nice, but then also, like, to be nice, and then Paul helped us, like, get rid of that. <laughs> well, you can imagine that confuses the computer, right? If you say, if you have a whole line in there that says, be really, really kind, um, and then you say, but don't be so kind. Oh, yeah, that would confuse uh, me, too. <laughs> It's nuanced, <laughs> isn't it? It's nuanced. It's very nuanced. But, it's, but, if there was a way to figure out how to say that clearly, um, you know, well, maybe it's Sam, down to Sam, vocabulary. Sam, what, what did you and Nate come up with? For the email? 
Yeah. We we came up with um or we worked on in it for math class I think since we had free time, and um he tried to like change it and then it started inputting like it went from kind to angry and it was like because <laughs> so we had to change it back and like if it's not broke don't fix it like kind of like that except it is like we're trying to improve on it but um we try just duplicating so our work previously doesn't get deleted because we know that the edits might like affect how the ai works and currently we're like yeah. happy with the email ai like we're not we're we're happy that it like produces emails but like still we don't want it to be that nice you were playing with the word appropriate, right? Like Yeah, Nate's Nate put in the word like always um say what's appropriate for the situation. Hmm. Yeah. And we're not sure that will work or not, but hmm. um though that so I like that it produces an email and then makes you think. I'm wondering if, and this is just a challenge to think about, um, if you can have it, have the GPT also ask questions back. In other words, at the end say, hey, did I get this right? Or do you want me to change this in any way? Right? Which would you would like then, yeah, go ahead. Would it be like an email, like conversation hybrid? Is that like possible? I think it is. So that's really? worth. So, Sam, so we don't know each other well yet, but I want to tell you this. I, so far with AI, I never say anything's impossible, <laughs> right? Uh, you, you just want to say, hey, could we do this or not? And then we try. But I absolutely think you could tell it give me an email and then analyze that email and tell me tell me what i need to think about before i send it out right yeah that's which which then becomes a conversation and that's what i want to guys toward is building these things so that they don't just give you something they give you something that also opens up the conversation with the user mm -hmm. so does that make sense yeah <laughs> so I'm, push, Paul, I'm pushing you to the edge here, but yes, what? Go ahead. So are you saying the conversation with the person who's creating the email or the person who's getting the email? Who's creating the email. Okay. So really um, checking back in with the creator mm -hmm. to get more oh, input. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. and And you could even think about and, and again, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not saying this is right or wrong. Um, you could even think about not giving the whole email. You could say, give me the, you, you could prompt it to give me the beginning of the email and let me tell you if it's okay or not, right? And then give me other parts later. But, but I'm not sure of that because, because there's something nice about seeing the whole email too. So I, you know. And I like the way you had this insert time, the name, so forth. Talk to me about Kobe Bryant because you're you're moving to, you're moving to something there that is about simulation. And um, what are you what are you asking Kobe Bryant to do here? Yeah, so it was basically just we were trying to like add persona to the book that Sparker. Mm -hmm. And I heard uh, Mr. Dronsky talk about, like, you can turn, since I had basketball practice that I told her today, I think, or maybe yesterday or something, I told her I had basketball practice, and she was like, oh, you can make a, um AI that sounds like a basketball player. <laughs> and um, I decided to make it like Kobe Bryant, and then just, I gave my um AI the persona of Kobe Bryant. How did through you do interviews that? and other stuff, and then um, wait, wait, wait. Say that. Slow down. How did you give it? How did you do that? I'm gonna look for it. Here. I really just like told it to just act like Kobe Bryant. Okay. 
that that's this one right here mm. yeah i noticed that the sentence structure of that response sounded a lot like his um what was it oh to basketball or whatever it was called um yes it replicated his the style of his writing yeah and then it also references the like mamba mentality a lot throughout like his mm -hmm. response um which is interesting and scary <laughs> that yes. it can access that information so readily so this is your prompt right here it, yeah when i go from different things you, you you're saying this one now right speak like Hogan be right yes okay mm -hmm. when given a passage of text use it to propose it okay so here's here's the secret not a secret but here's here's something that we've been able to do for about three weeks right you can go online and find an interview with Kobe Bryant. And you can you can tell it, you can say right here, you can say, hey, when Kobe Bryant speaks, and I want to suggest that you call it Kobe Simulator, so it's clear it's not him. But we can work on that. Um, you can say, hey, when Kobe Simulator talks, use the same language that's in this interview, right? Yeah. And so you can just paste the entire interview right here and it will it will use that language to respond. We we've created 12 different position people with different positions in the Israel Hamas war. So Tanahisi Coates talks to somebody else talks to, the different people can talk and those are yeah you can look at those and, and, and get ideas for how we do this a little bit. Yeah, so for the interviews thing, like, mm -hmm. um, I think I might have asked you this before, but, like, yeah. on Youth Voices, like, for the Sam Q, like, Talk Like Me AI, I told yeah. it that I like pizza rolls, and, like, I, I put, like, a piece of, um like, what I'd say normally. Yes. And then for the rest of the thing, for the rest of the time, all I would talk about is like me eating pizza rolls. So I don't know how much like the interview really like. Will it only use words from the interview? I uh, the answer is I don't know. <laughs> I wonder if maybe if yes. you didn't say words, maybe if you said speak Style. in the sentence structure or tone. Oh, yeah, I, put, I put tone and slang, I think. Tone, yeah. slang. So here's the other here's the other complication though. If you if you only have a very small question, the AI will will use all of what's in your prompt and try to figure out from that. But if it's but if it's connected to a text, right? that you're analyzing it gives it, it it gives it a more equal um understanding does that make sense yeah okay gosh um so here's so here's here's uh rabbi bruce who's uh she's a rabbi in los angeles right and i heard a couple of sermons that she gave and i heard a, an interview with her right so i just say be rabbi bruce Right in each response, prepare your whole thing, keep your comment short from the beginning, and make sure you're answering the questions. So there's some important stuff in here. But then I say, um, use your three sermons that are copied here, and your interview with Ezra Klein as an example of how she would respond. And then I just pasted her three sermons and her interview here, right, which gets pretty long but then down below i say you know this is the end of the interviews your output should end at 150 words anyway it, it right so that's an example for you to look at just want to say i also at the end of the comment refer back to the original source that we got it from just just to think about that a little bit mm -hmm. But that's how we've created simulators so that when I'm reading a news article about the war, 
I can say, oh, I wonder what this rabbi would think about what happened. Or I wonder what Ta-Nehisi Coates would say about this. He's a, a, a thinker, um, a writer, right? right? Yeah. Does that make some sense, Sam? Yeah. So, so, so you're seeding the, the AI's knowledge of the uh, person who will speak separately and then giving them a text to respond to. Yes, that's right. Um, I, <laughs> very, I, I'm, I'm looking at that. Uh, very quick example, Rebecca Skloot uh, 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 in Salt Lake City, Chris Sloan's kids are reading um, Henrietta Lacks, um, oh. right? Mm -hmm. And um, and so and they're analyzing it from a writer's point of view. So we made a Rebecca Skloot um, simulator using um, a, a couple, um, maybe just one um, interview in in the same way we just showed you here. Um, and then, <laughs> Debbie, when I started thinking about what I'm writing for you, <laughs> um, and um, I I went in and said. Hey, Rebecca Sklut, I'm writing something that has personal connections. It's scientific and it braids together stuff the way you braided it together in that novel. Could you give me some advice on my writing? And she did a pretty good job of that. Right? I love so, that. I love right? that because yeah. you were making the creative connection. That's right. Yeah. That's what. So I feel like one of the real takeaways from AI is that if you use it well, it gives you agency. It's almost the opposite. It, you don't give away your agency. You don't simply passively copy and paste. Right. You, you become a very powerful agent of your own learning. I love mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. and, I, and earlier, in the earlier hour, um, Sam's teacher said that she feels it's as as important as what they're getting from the thinking partners, right? Is this process of making their own thinking partners and thinking about that? Um, and I and I think what you just said is why, right? Sam, talk to us more. What are you going to do next? What are you thinking about? Well, it's really uh, I'm going to think about it more. Cause I just like experimenting with like the personas, cause I think that's really cool, and mm -hmm. um, it's really what comes to the top of my head in homeroom and when I have free time or in um, language arts. Um, I'll probably work with Nate on it a lot. I think we'll. Um, I'll definitely make a few random ones, and um, me and Nate will probably work more on the email AI. It's just like. It's what I'm feeling in the moment. It's what I'll make. Yeah. So, Sam, you are making my me very happy because we built this. We built this tool. So it's it's going to be pretty fast. That Google Docs and other tools too are all going to give you, you know, five possible things. It's going to say, "We'll write that email for you." Do you want it to be kind, angry? you know, appropriate, whatever, it'll give you those four words. But we've built a tool that sparks your imagination, we hope, and and makes you kind of create those those things, right? Does that make some sense? Yeah, I think one of like the benefits of like now comment, because I know like chat GPT is one sided. Now comment, you can create your own chat GPT. Like, I think that's what um, Miss Dedronsky said too today, like how like you're creating like your learning partner. And you like know, yeah, you mm -hmm. know, Sam, as I listen to you, I think to myself, um, you really, the sky is the limit on how you design your learning partner. You can create the learning partner that you wish that you can imagine the most Im relevant, important, interesting learning partner yourself that you that you can create. Yeah, I really agree with that because, like, um, 
if you have a specific like area you want to target like i want like how um not comments good because like you can specifically target like book thought journals like if i was to go on chat gpt and ask it like help me with my book thought journal it wouldn't know what it was but on on now comment and like creating your own ai like you can personalize it for um the topic you specifically want it to help with and and specifically how you want the feedback or the commenting yeah, you know like, I, I want you to be kind to me but not so kind that you don't give me good criticism you know yeah <laughs> Or, or put your comment in and make it a poem. You can, you can ask it to do that too, by the way. So just thinking about the output can get pretty, you know, interesting. Sam, Sam, also a while ago, you, you tried to make a template, which is similar to Thinking Partner, um, where people put in their, their um, conditions and then it spits out the, how did that one get? It spits out the disease they may have. Well, that one's like because like it, it kind of works where you like um, put in like oh I have a sore throat and then it should respond with like um, like diseases or viruses that apply to having a sore throat and other symptoms. But that doesn't really work because if you have a sore throat, you can have like strep throat, flu, and there's so many others. So it's like. I, yeah, I, I feel yeah, like they're, they're, like, you're you're opening a can of worms here about medical ethics around all this, but but yes, you should you should explore that more. Sorry, I cut you off. What were you gonna say? Yeah, but I feel like the like kind of now comment like if you can con if you can like also say, um, like give a second symptom, and then it narrows it down again, and then you're like. Mm. And like a third symptoms, it can narrow it down like even further. You know so what that need... is? That, that model is the model your doctor uses when he interviews you about your sore throat. He, in his mind, he's doing that exact same kind of triage. Okay, you got a sore throat. It could be A, B, C, D. What can I ask that will help me narrow it down? Yeah. But Sam, that makes me think that you need to to interview your doctor and ask him what his protocol is like what do you how do you do how do you decide and then you can like copy what he tells you into right but but i love your idea of trying to make it conversational like here's the first one give me feedback here's the second one so that, that that's a good idea mm -hmm. sam um we will continue learning with you <laughs> um but we're going to stop for this evening, I think. All right. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for coming. How was basketball practice? Uh, it was pretty good. I scored. Good. What position right. do you play? I'm a point guard since I'm, like, kind of small. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're, you're big in my heart. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Hey, hey, Paul, I have a quick question. Yeah. Oh, sure. Um, so oh. If, if, we're, if we're looking for, like, to use the, the now comment, um, yeah. is, is it FERPA and COPPA compliant? Um, yes. Um, so uh, your district your would send me um, a a thing that asks that, those questions and I would fill it out and you would decide whether it is or not. But so far, every district I've been able, it works. Okay, perfect. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard to answer that in general. It's used all over the country everywhere, right? So um, can yeah, you no say worries. Yeah, we, no, no. we have a form that we send off to you know, yeah. software companies all the time and they fill it out and then our tech people either approve it or not. So, right. Right. So, so basically we don't, you know, the information we, that it's quite possible to, we, we hide last names everywhere. We, we um, it's quite possible to put up classes without using email addresses. There are lots of things we do to, for protection oh. of data. Um, awesome. And, 
and just and and for the AI question, um, if you use ChatGPT, all of the information that a kid uses when they log in goes there, and mm -hmm. all of their all of their goes to OpenAI, and all of their content does too. Um, using it through now comment, it goes through my account or the district's account, right? And um, and the kids' information stays with now comment. It doesn't go to OpenAI. They, and the content they promise us is not being used to train their models. So mm -hmm. it, it has to go to their computers for it to work, but they promise that anybody who goes through the a, a, API. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, the short answer is we think about those things all the time and we hope and we'll make it work if it doesn't work. <laughs> Perfect. With your Thank tech you. people. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, Nick, thank I you get, for hanging out so long. And Debbie, it's great to have you here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's so much fun to talk to kids about this. They're just no, amazing, know. aren't they? Oh, my gosh. They, they come yeah. with, we come with guardrails and they come right. open. Yeah, I know. Open to try. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. I love that. I, yeah. I guess I have to do some more poking around. Um, so, on, on and Victoria, if you're so on now, comment right at the top. There is a how to set up your, um, you know, so once you log in, hit that. There are instructions for how to how to set up okay. your your office the way Sam did <laughs> your business office. I love he, how he gave those roles. Those different. Um, yeah. I'm telling, and this is just roles. since this is just since Monday. I was like, what? <laughs> How, how old is he or what grade is he in i guess he's, a, he's an eighth grader yeah. eighth grader okay that sounded about right, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. awesome um, what a pleasure yeah all right thank you thank you thank you so much thank victoria you. we should we need to get in touch in another way too so sometimes okay. yeah definitely okay. yeah i'll reach out